Horizon Forbidden West is now on PC, which PlayStation sent me over a code for, so I decided I'd use it as an excuse to play this game once again since I already 100%ed it on PS5, and I feel like there's just a ton of different tips and tricks we can go over for new and returning players, some of which took me over 100 hours to even realize. A huge tip for any new PC players is that you have the complete edition, meaning that you have the Burning Shores DLC that you can start after completing the main story, where you will then be given the To the Burning Shores quest. And then you also have all of the items that PS5 players had to pay for in the deluxe edition of the game, including all of these armor sets and outfits. After the first hour or so, after completing the intro to the game, you will come to Chain Scrape, that first big settlement in Forbidden West, where you can find your stash, and in that stash, you will find the Nora Thundersling, a pretty good blast sling to have early on in the game. It's not incredibly good, but it's decent early on. And then for armor, you have the Karja Behemoth Elite and the Nora Thunder Elite outfit. Again, these two armor sets came with the deluxe edition of the game that is now in the complete edition on PC. And they're not incredibly good armor sets, but just like the Blast Sling, they're pretty decent early on in the game, and even better once you upgrade them at a workbench. Plus, I mean, they just look really cool. So for some settings that I highly recommend using, as much as I think it's more realistic to have to bend down and pick up each resource that you need and have to go through the whole animation just to grab enough Ridgewood to craft an arrow, it can get incredibly annoying really quickly. Over in your settings in the general tab, you can scroll down and toggle on pickups to either completely disable the pickup animation or you can even set it to auto pickup so that if you pass by any resources that you're not maxed out on, it will automatically pick those up and also disable the pickup animation for it at the same time. You can also enable navigation settings to make finding your objective or something that you've marked on the map a million times easier. Go into your settings and toggle that to on, and then once you start playing again, all you have to do is open up your focus, the thing that you scan with, which is R3 on a controller and the V key on keyboard, and then just tap L1 or the mouse wheel to snap around onto whatever you've marked. And then there is also a setting to automatically pull out your glider if you're falling. This isn't incredibly necessary, but I think everyone has accidentally fallen from 2,000 feet up and died at least once. And then big thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video, who wanted me to just touch on some additional settings that you should be using for the best possible experience in here. It's hard to argue that this PC port of Horizon Forbidden West isn't great, because it is. They even give you the pre-launch pop-up here to change any settings before it opens, like I wish most modern games did. But if you're using a 40 series graphics card, which is going to give you the highest possible quality and performance, you're also going to want to head into your settings and toggle on DLSS. This uses NVIDIA's DLSS 3 capability to give you a huge bump to your frame rate and your performance. I'm playing in 4K and average out almost 200 frames per second with my 4090. If you're not using DLSS, you're probably getting half of that. This also uses Nvidia's Reflex that basically reduces your latency so that you can have the most accurate feeling gameplay and makes your actions just feel quicker. I think it's a no-brainer to have this one on with all of the constant action that happens in this game. Alternatively, you can toggle on DLAA instead to give you a good boost in quality so that it renders the game in the most accurate quality that you're playing at. But DLAA is also requiring your PC to do more work, so you're getting worse performance that way, and that's why I always stick to DLSS no matter what game I'm playing, and I highly recommend it. Because with Nvidia's DLSS 3, you're getting all of these incredible looking visuals that Forbidden West has to offer, while at the same time getting the best possible performance you can get too. I especially stuck to DLSS when I was on a lower end PC since I was trying to get all of the boost I could get, but that makes a huge difference. You can use either one of these, DLSS or DLSS. AA in companion with frame generation to boost your frame rates even higher as well. If you want to get the maximum amount of benefit from DLSS, you're going to want to have frame generation toggled on as well. Using a 40 series GeForce graphics card is going to be the best possible way to play, but having those settings toggled on is going to make it even better. And thanks again to Nvidia for sponsoring this video. The biggest thing that I wish I knew and didn't even fully understand all the way up to beating the game for the first time is how elements and elemental damage really works in here since you have all of these odd elements like purge water and plasma that can be sort of hard to understand and is really helpful once you know how to use them. You'll realize that a meter pops up with the elements logo whenever you shoot an enemy with that element. To make that element really take effect, you need to fill that meter up by continuously hitting them with it, where then the white bar will start ticking down around it, which shows how long this effect will last. You can also only have one element affecting a machine at a time, so if you set an enemy on fire, and then hit them with the second element, once that element meter is full, it will take over. Hitting virtually any component on a machine uses it as a shortcut to applying that elemental damage. Destroying sacks and hitting the container things on the enemy machines cause them to explode and instantly put that element into effect. 
Those canisters are also best to hit with its same element. So orange canisters, shoot them with a fire arrow, and they will deal a ton of damage. You can scan enemies to see which elements are their weaknesses. This is super helpful until you memorize what each enemy's weaknesses are, but I have never been able to do that because there are just so many different types of enemies, and because even Apex variants of enemies have different weaknesses than their original variant. I end up scanning them every single time. The element damage number that it shows on the menu is sort of misleading and just confusing. The top number is how much the impact of your arrow or whatever ammo type you're using. It's just the initial impact damage that that regular old arrow does does, while the bottom number is the actual elemental damage that the element applied to that arrow does. There are a total of 8 different elements in the game, some of which are pretty easy to understand. Frost is probably my favorite element in the game because it completely freezes the machine that you shoot it with and makes you seemingly deal double damage to any part of their body, even ignoring armor all while they're affected by the frost effect, which is one of the longest lasting elemental effects in the game. That Sun Scourge bow that we talked about is also the best frost bow. Just like frost, shock damage will also completely stun the machine that you shoot it with, just not for as long, but still a pretty decent amount of time and causes a high damage explosion when it takes effect. The Death Seeker Shadow Legendary Bow uses shock arrows and is rewarded to you in the arena at the Maw location for 80 arena medals. Completing every Relic Ruin will also give you the legendary Shredder Gauntlet, and if you completed the side quest, you can grab the Lightning Hunter Bow. And even though it's not a legendary, it is one of the best weapons in the game. Fire isn't as great as it was in the original game, and it can be pretty annoying once the machine you light on fire starts to panic, but you'll still want to use it against machines that are weak to it. And the best weapons that I recommend to grab for it are the Sun Scourge Legendary bow that you get for completing all six rebel camp side quests in the game. I also have videos on how to get all of the legendary armor sets and legendary weapons which are like the best items in the game, so if you want to check those out they're in the description. Acid is a phenomenal element as well since it covers them in acid and slowly melts through their armor over time, which causes even more damage and causes their armor pieces to fall off. This is a good example of why using the element that that machine is weak against is always a good option, but also why you don't have to use that exclusively. You can shoot a machine with acid whether they're weak to it or not, just to get its armor off and then use the element it's weak against after, or put the acid's ability to increase all of your damage to it to use by shooting it with regular arrows, since when they're covered in acid your damage is multiplied to them. That Sun Scourge bow that we went over, once again, is one of the best bows for acid as well, just like it is for fire and frost. Purge water is essentially just water that purges machines of their elements. Once you activate that purge water effect, that machine is now no longer strong against whatever element that it's resistant to. Normally if a machine is strong against something like for example fire, it is going to be harder to light them on fire, but if you use purge water first, that will no longer be the case. Purge water will also fully disable all of that machine's attacks that deal elemental damage. If you complete the need to know side quest, it will give you the lightning hunter bow, which is probably the best purge water bow and one of the best frost damage bows, but I generally don't use purge water really at all, since I almost just see it as a waste of time. Plasma is kind of cool, once the plasma effect runs out it will cause an explosion, the meter that fills up each time you hit them again decides how powerful that explosion will be, but I've never considered that extra explosion damage to really be worth the effort that you have to put in to fill that meter. The best bow for plasma damage is the Forgefall Sharp Shot bow that you get for the Maw's Arena for 80 arena medals. Those arena challenges can be completed on any difficulty by the way. If you've ever seen this logo on a weapon and wondered what the heck it means, it's the Berserk element. Berserk will just aggro machines into attacking each other. It's pretty rare to see on a weapon, but the Martial Hunter bow can be purchased at the arena with Hunter's Medals. That's probably the best weapon for Berserk. The last element in Forbidden West is Adhesive, and I really never see a use to it since the only real thing it does is attempt to slow down enemies, which it does worse than the elements like Shock and Frost, which actually completely immobilize that enemy, but the only time I've thought Adhesive was a decent skill is against Dreadwings and Stormbirds, where they can be a little annoying to fight up in the air, but Adhesive will bring them down to the ground and keep them from really attacking. If you find all 10 Black Box locations, you can turn them in near the arena to get the Wings of the Ten Legendary Blast Sling that deals adhesive damage and is probably the best at doing so. Like I said, you can scan enemies to see their elemental weaknesses, but you can also scan their weak points like the canisters that we went over for example, where you can then go around and tag them to keep them highlighted when you're done scanning, which is super helpful if you're trying to instantly ignite them with an element or just don't remember where these weak spots are. These components are also just the best places to shoot in general, 
to deal the most damage. And then another combat tip, just tapping L2 or the right mouse button, which typically aims in, will also load an arrow. You don't have to hold it. I think it's almost necessary that you just tap these sometimes so that you can load an arrow, dodge, and then quickly shoot when you get a chance to. But that's pretty much it. Leave a like and subscribe for more Horizon Forbidden West videos. And thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video.